On today's episode of Annual Pass, we deep dive into Super Nintendo World, and I forget one of the princesses. Or princess, prince I, I'm not sure, whatever, the plural princess. I'm sorry, princess. Annual Pass. Hello, everyone, and welcome to a brand new episode of Annual Pass. This is the podcast where we talk about all things theme parks, rides, shows, attractions. If it happens inside of a theme park, it happens here on Annual Pass. I am your host, Jack Patillo, and of course, joining me as always is my lovely, beautiful, and talented co-host, BK. Hi, Beats! Hello! <laughs> so, uh, you can see welcome. Happy New Year, everyone, by the way. Uh, it's good to, good that, you know, you're here. Welcome to 2023. Uh, we had some tech issues in the office, so we're going to be recording from home. So, you might see a couple episodes now and in the future where we're recording from home because we had to do a whole bunch of batch recordings before the end of the year because broadcast has to take vacation apparently that's they enjoy taking a break from work over the course of the year and also uh you're out of town i'm out of town i'm actually uh, if you're listening to this live i'm currently in florida doing marathon weekend with me and a bunch of my friends from the rope drop run club on part of our Discord server, if you ever want to join that. And uh, yeah, we're going to be, I'm doing the Dopey Challenge, BK. Do you think I'm going to make it? I believe in you. <laughs> it's going to be a crazy uh, person, you. <laughs> it's going to be pretty intense. It's uh, it's four races, my 5K, 10K, half marathon, and full ma marathon over the course of four days. So uh, we'll see how it goes. Uh, I think I think I can do it. At least uh, my training didn't go, it, it, it tapered off at the end. I had some stuff pop up where I wasn't able to sort of accomplish what I wanted to, but I think mentally I'm prepared for it because I've done it before, so I know I can do it again. It's just a matter of when my legs hold up for uh, the, half, the, the half marathon into the full marathon. That's what I'm scared about. I think it's uh, mentals have the battle, and I know that I don't have the mentals, so I'll be cheering <laughs> you on the entire time, Jack. The, the battle has been lost by yes. by your mental capacity? Great. For awesome. sure. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, real quick, thank you very much, everyone, for listening to Annual Pass. You guys are the absolute best. Make sure to follow us over on Twitter and on Instagram. We are annual underscore pass over there. We're also annual pass pod over on TikTok, and we are YouTube.com slash annual pass. We got a bunch of really cool vlogs and stuff over there. Check that out. Out as well uh yeah we've got some neat stuff just hit and so yeah this is going to be a fun episode today because it is the new year and i figured we should talk about something that's coming out very very soon uh as of recording this it was actually literally announced yesterday but super nintendo world is coming to Universal Studios Hollywood. Uh, this isn't the very first Super Nintendo World. Obviously, the first one opened up in Japan uh, back in 20. Uh, it was in March 18th of 2021. But, uh, but yeah, I figured we should talk about it. That sound like sound like okay. Is are you okay with that, BK? Uh, yeah. Are you kidding me? I literally <laughs> lost my mind when I saw the announcement with how soon that was coming to the states. Like what? Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm excited for that. Uh, this is something that so I kind of wanted to talk about sort of we're not going to get into the very specifics about the attractions and whatnot, but I kind of want to talk about a general world overview because I've got a feeling that you and I might make it out to, Lo to Los Angeles out to uh, Hollywood to go check out Universal Studios Hollywood to go uh, check out the brand new Super Nintendo World when it opens, uh, at least that version of it. So uh, this is well, let's just dive into it. Let's not dive into it. So the very first Super Nintendo World opened up at Universal Studios Japan on and actually it opened February 4th, 2021. It opened for annual pass holders. Hey, hey. And that's we love our annual pass holders um, open up February 4th, 2021 in Japan for annual pass holders only. So they actually limited it only to annual pass holders because of the capacity issues, uh, oh, wow. because they knew everyone was going to want to go to this thing. And then it had its grand opening March 18th, 2021. So about a month later. And uh, yeah, so it is also being built. So the, the current one is open Universal Japan. If you remember, we had uh, T uh, Chris, Chris, the Explorer, TDR Explorer came and he talked to us about it. And he's a big fan of the park. If you want to get really in depth into uh, Super Nintendo World in Japan, Chris has a ton of videos up on YouTube. So go check him out. TDR Explorer over on YouTube. He's got videos explaining like the, the power bands, which we'll talk about, like the food, the attractions, everything. It's, it's really, really cool. I don't He's done a fantastic job of it. Uh, so 
It's opening up, so they just announced that it is opening up in Hollywood. A smaller version of it is opening up on February 17th, 2023. So just about a month and a week away, about five, six weeks away, if you're listening to this live right now. That's a, that's a pretty sweet uh, uh, Valentine's Day gift, I think, right? That's, that's what pretty close I'm to it. saying. I would love that. Take me on a date to Nintendo World. What's good? <laughs> Let Sign Yoshi be up. my Valentine. It'll be great. <laughs> Uh, then is built. They're building two more. There's actually building one up at Universal Singapore that'll be open in 2025, and of course, Epic Universe is going to be opening up in 2025 as well, and uh, it is going to be one of the opening lands. It's, it's wild to me. They still, I think, I want to say that Super Nintendo World is the only official land they've announced at Epic Universe. They still haven't announced any of the other lands. I think oh. Super Nintendo World is the only one that they have officially said it's Super Nintendo. Uh, excuse me, Super Nintendo World. Um, cause the other ones, you know, they've got the, the, you know, universal classic monsters area, the Harry Potter mm -hmm. area and the, how to train your dragon area as well. Um, which we still don't know what you think it's going to be lands or pavilions or cause it's islands and islands of adventure. I wonder what they're going to call it there. I don't know. I don't know. I like the land. It makes me feel like yeah. I've been transported to another world. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I think, I mean, Universal has done a really great job of uh, like r doing that where they transport you to a whole other world where like Diagon Alley now at Universal Studios, like you walk through that sort of that corridor and mm -hmm. suddenly you're in a whole other place. And it looks like with Epic Universe, they're going to take that idea and really expand on it where there's a giant central hub. So the, the central hub area is like a, a whole park on its own almost. But then they have like a warp pipe to get to super nintendo world supposedly it might be like a parisian arch to get to the new harry potter area who knows what it's going to be for how to train your dragon yeah it's, it's it's meant to be like you're entering into a whole other universe when you're inside of those areas you're just enveloped in them so it's like a wreck it ralph breaks the internet i'm freaking <laughs> out right now is this exactly. real you're lying to me Dad. no no seriously that's what it's gonna be like it's gonna be really really cool it's <gasps> i'm looking forward to 2025 so two years from now it's gonna be a great great year for uh theme park fans and uh, I, I'm very much looking forward to that when that happens. But uh, let's let's dive into it here. So uh, again, that's going to be open 2025. So we have some time. We got we got a couple more episodes to go before we hit that one. Uh, a creative partnership. This is I think this is from Universal. A creative partnership between Nintendo and Universal was first announced in May of 2015 with construction of a dedicated Nintendo themed area confirmed for Universal Studios Japan and both American locations the following year. Construction began on Universal Studios Japan area in June of 2017. Following several delays due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the land had its grand opening at Universal Studios Japan on March 18th, 2021. So obviously COVID hit around, you know, 2020 and that really threw everything off. Supposedly they, they wanted to get this thing open in, in 2020 and it just wasn't going to happen because uh, Japan especially took COVID very, very seriously mm -hmm. and they shut down everything. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty rough. Uh, Mario creator and Nintendo creative fellow Shigeru Miyamoto, Shig Shigeru, Shigeru, Shigeru Miyamoto was heavily involved in the design and construction of the land and its attractions. From and now I've got a quote from the New, the New Yorker here. They did an interview with him. Uh, he says, "Quote: Recently, I've been very involved with Universal Studios in Osaka, planning the attractions that are going to be there and putting the final touches on the ride." So Miyamoto had his hands on this, which is like the way to do it. If, if you're going to do it anyway, make sure that the creator <laughs> is is directly involved in this whole thing. And they oh, did a very sure. good. They did a very good job about that. So, uh, yeah, he was actually there and he was all in, apparently. So they actually announced like they showed off a ton of stuff for Super Nintendo World during the Nintendo Direct episodes. Um, I don't know if you remember that, but they actually had like I don't I'm not a huge Nintendo game guy, but I absolutely watched the Nintendo Directs about the Universal Studios stuff. So uh, it was very, very cool. And see him running around the park was really, really sweet. Uh, on November 30th, 2020, Universal officially announced that the land would open at Universal Studios Japan on February 4th, 2021. However, in January, the opening was once again delayed indefinitely after the Japanese government reimposed a state of emergency in response to a third wave of COVID-19 infections in the city. However, guests with the Universal Studios Japan annual pass are allowed to visit the area as of February 4, 2021, and eventually open to the public on March 18th, 2021, a month after opening. The entirety of Universal Studios Japan closed from April 25th to June 7th, 2021 due to COVID. So opened up a whole new land and then shut it down. That's wow, that's the worst. That is brutal. It's uh it's it's something that I remember watching. So like I, I think I've told you like during COVID, 
Uh, one of my escapes was uh, I would watch Midway Mania, who's a YouTuber in Florida, and he was going to Universal Studios Islands of Adventure and he was filming the construction of Velocicoaster. And like literally it was like almost every day he would put up a video and I would watch it every single day. And so and along with that, I saw a bunch of people posting stuff about the the construction of Super Nintendo World out in Japan. And so seeing that being built and it's like it looked amazing. And I don't know how much you've seen from inside Super Nintendo World, but it feels very much like I mean, I haven't been there personally, but it feels very much like you are transported into the world of Super Mario. It is like you you go in through a warp pipe, like you walk from like the, the main park in through a warp pipe, which makes like that warp pipe, to, oh you know, that sort of noise. It makes that noise as you're walking through it and you're inside a peach's castle. Um, like up. you start there and you walk out of there and you're in this sort of like uh, this area where in front of you, you have Bowser's castle. You've got all the hills. You've got, you know, like the coins, question blocks every it's, it's like stepping into a video game. It, it is really, really incredible. Uh, yeah. I don't know if you how many photos you've seen of this place, but it looks like I mean, it's it's straight up. I'll, I'll post this over on, on, our, on our thingy here. Um it straight it straight up looks like you're inside the world of Super Nintendo. It, Wait, it is, is that it's, it's real? Wild. Okay, so um, I've seen a lot of um. That's real footage. I've seen mock-ups and like images of like what it's supposed to look like, or at least pictures and stuff. But I haven't seen it in real life. Yeah, it's uh, it is absolutely it's it's gorgeous. It's I mean like Universal has been knocking it out of the park, no pun intended, since uh, they started doing you know uh, I mean Harry Potter World, like all the like the Wizarding World of Harry Potter stuff, like with Diagon Alley and with um, and Hogsmeade. That was sort of their like that that was their big foray into the world of uh, of like let's do some cool stuff with <laughs> with theme parks and uh yeah we've got we're watching some video been sharing with us thank you ben yeah i mean universal really did step up their game i feel like when it comes to like like immersion in that sense when they did incorporate like wizarding world they really wanted it to feel like you're in a different place but you're still in the park and i feel like that's really awesome so to kind of hear that they're taking the same like uh, angle with Nintendo World. I'm I'm in. I I was in before, but now I'm super in. <laughs> yeah, and, and especially so. That, so well, well, one thing that is going on is a little different. So again, you know, Super Nintendo World Japan has been open for a while now, about a year now. Um, but the one in Hollywood is going to be a little different. So Hollywood, I don't know how much you know about the uh, the Hollywood Park, but it is very small. So that's it's, what is I've it, been told, like scale yeah. wise. Is it because just Florida's got more real estate or? Exactly that. Okay. So, I mean, you know, uh, the Hollywood Park was built around Universal Studios, the actual Universal Studios. So the the lower lot area was mostly sound stages, mostly like, you know, where uh, and not warehouses, but where they make TV and film. I mean, right. th you, you can take a tram tour to the back lot where you see like the, the clock tower from Back to the Future, which has been used in tons of stuff and like oh all, all these sets and everything. I mean, like stuff that's actually used. Like if you're a fan of, you know, um, I mean, like so many Movies, shows have been cinema, filmed. Cinema, shows. Yeah. <laughs> this sounds like I send me. I can't believe I've never been. Gosh. Believe, well, maybe in February, you and I will make it out there. We can take the, the back lot tour and we can do a whole thing. I would cry. <laughs> so, but that being said, you know, Universal Studios Hollywood has been very constrained because they're sharing real estate with an actual, you know, working production facility. So they've they've never had sort of the ability to expand so much as a lot of Universal Studios Hollywood has been pretty much if you want to build something new, you got to tear something down. Um this, though, for the first time ever, they actually built into some of the sound stages that were there. So in the lower lot area of Universal Studios Hollywood next to Transformers, I want to say they, they kind of took over one or two sound stages and just leveled them and have built up Super Nintendo World there. Um, that being said... There's not a lot of room to expand at Universal Studios Hollywood, so uh, we, we can go through it. So in uh, in Japan, there are two attractions. They have the it's it's Mario Kart Koopa's Challenge, which you know in Japan uh, Bowser is called Koopa, so you know it's Bowser's Challenge in the states, uh, which is that is an interactive like dark ride. It's it's kind of like a slow moving dark ride, but the cool thing is you wear these AR goggles that do an overlay, like a video overlay. So as you're on this slow moving dark ride, you see stuff and it's like you're actually in a race where you can contri you can like throw shells and do all kinds of stuff. You're, you're actually competing and racing and keeping track of how well you do based on your power band, which is a whole other thing, which I'm very excited for. Um, 
yeah and so you can actually do better you can do you can race multiple times and uh and yeah and so that attraction is coming to universal studios hollywood the second attraction they have out there right now is yoshi's adventure which is a slow moving omni mover ride which is uh you know kind of like haunted mansion or something along those lines where it's just a very kind of like slow moving family type attraction um where you can, you can interact with a couple different characters a lot of animatronics but it's kind of it's a family thing um which is like a whole bunch of yoshis kind of going around it looks really cute and kind of go, goes throughout the park um hollywood is not getting that attraction because that takes oh. up a lot of real estate and they don't have the room for it uh so we're not going to be seeing that in hollywood unfortunately it will be at epic universe though in florida in 2025 and Japan right now is actually expanding Super Nintendo World. They're adding a Donkey Kong area. So there is a Donkey Kong minecart attraction being built. I heard about this. Yeah, yeah. It's, it is very, very cool. The technology behind that is very, very neat because what they've done, Universal has patented a new style of roller coaster where the track is. So, you know, normally you see a track. It's kind of like, you know, it's two rails side by side and you ride on it and whatever. So the track has been lifted vertically. So it's like a straight line and the, the car attaches to that on a pole. So you're actually above the track, kind of suspended above the track. And then fake track has been placed underneath you to make it look like you're on that track. What that means is as you're going around on this fake track, there are jumps and like and lane switches from side to side, which the real track, you know, you never actually leave the track. Right. You never jump off of it. But because that it feels like you're actually on this broken track moving around very much like a Donkey Kong minecart attraction or right? you know, like a Donkey Kong minecart level in Super Nintendo, like in Donkey Kong Country or one of the various games. It looks really, really okay, cool. I'm seeing a picture now. That's what you meant by like, like vertical, like on the, it's like yeah. on the side, like the track yeah. is really the side part. And then this kind of like claw arm is attached to it. And then the yeah. tracks underneath it. That's so yeah. cool. If you're watching on youtube.com slash annual pass, well, maybe we can post the images there so you can kind of get an idea of what we're talking about. But what they're doing is they're actually kind of masking the track on the bottom so you don't know that it's there. Wow. And it feels like your minecart is actually on this other track. So that way, when you're, you know, you're going around, cruising around, you see like, oh my gosh, there's a break in the track and you jump. It feels like you're actually jumping, but really you're oh, safe wow. the whole time. It's going to be very, very cool. And so again, that is opening up in Japan. And I think I want to say 2024. So I think that attraction is opening up uh, this, or excuse me, 2023 maybe? It's opening up pretty sooner in Japan than it will be anywhere else. So, uh, But that one will be opening along with Super Nintendo World and Epic Universe. So that's actually coming with it. And you can see the scale model there that uh, Ben's posting over on our, on our stream as well. Uh, that looks very, very cool. And that, that one, is, so unfortunately, again, Hollywood, unless they destroy some buildings, won't have room to expand out and do this kind of stuff. And I'm Aww. curious to see what exactly that that's going to uh, mean for the expansion of that park. So I don't know if they're making enough money to just start justifying leveling sound stages there or what, or if they can move. And there is a golf course next to <laughs> universal Hollywood that I think universal has been trying to buy out for ages. And so maybe, uh, maybe they'll get that who knows, but um, yeah, we'll, we'll see how that goes. So those are the three real big attractions inside of Super Nintendo World. Uh, now, let's talk about the important part. You know, like, attractions are one thing. Let's talk about the food, BK. <gasps> the food, are there custom items? Oh my God, no way. So again, I'm not gonna dive into all the specific items. Again, Chris, TDR Explorer has done lots of videos on the food over at Universal in, Holly, or in, in Japan. And uh, there's some really, really cool stuff out there. But th there's one big restaurant uh, that is making its way to Hollywood. It's Kenopio's Cafe. I'm not sure. I, I think that's pronounced. And Kenopio's Kino, Cafe. Uh, that's what they call Toadstool. So, uh, so Toad in Japan is Kenopia or Kenopio. Kenopio. And uh, and he, there's a giant Toadstool Cafe that you get to walk inside, and inside is full of amazing, cool foods like Mario's Bacon Cheeseburger, Yoshi, Yoshi's Spinach Carbon Carbonara, uh, Fire Flower Spaghetti, a Pizza Bowl, a Piranha uh, Piranha Plant Caprices Caprices. I'm not sure that's how you say that. Uh, peaches Cake, Gold Pole Cake, and a Question Block Tiramisu. So <laughs> that's. The there, there are so many awesome foods there you can you can check out. It's it looks so cool. And again, that is making its way over to the uh, both of the both of the new uh, Super Nintendo worlds opening up in the States pretty soon. 
So I'm fascinated. I'm very interested if they're going to directly translate like the menu or if they're going to do like adaptations or versions of it because the portions are very different if we're looking at how what they offer in USJ and like how the style of their confectionery. So I'm yeah. curious if we'll get that because if that's the one place in the states that is at a theme park where i can get <laughs> japanese sweets i'm gonna lose it jack i i would like to think they're really gonna dive into it and like really just be like let's just kind of mirror what they have in japan and kind of go with it because it's nintendo and it's very it's a very japanese company and it's like right. let's not let's not americanize this too much right. i would hope I would uh, hope, but you never know. I get worried yeah. sometimes, Jack. I get worried. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, maybe the sizes are just a little bit bigger. <laughs> like, you know. Same food, same look, maybe just a little larger. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then also there is Yoshi Snack Island, uh, which also they have a bunch of really cool snacks. It's like a kind of a quick service, sort of like a walk up, you know, outdoor area where you can grab some stuff as well. Uh, it's just a snack stand. It's got a bunch of Yoshi stuff and there's some cool drinks, you know, like everything has to have a cool new drink. You got you to get your butter beer. You got to get your blue milk. You got to get your special drink drinks right so yeah, that's gonna have special drinks there as well and there's also um in japan so in japan popcorn is the big thing at the parks like that that's the big thing at all the different parks is popcorn um like you know in in um in anaheim at disneyland it's churros mm -hmm. and then uh you know it's like everywhere kind of has their own sort of thing but mm -hmm. popcorn is the big thing in japan and so there is a pit stop popcorn counter at, uh, in, in Super Nintendo World in Japan. So I don't know if that'll make the jump over to the States. I imagine so. But also they have tons of popcorn buckets because that's the thing. I don't even remember the whole figment popcorn bucket at Epcot yeah. that people lost their minds for. They've got mushroom. They got like one up mushrooms. They got super like super Mario popcorn buckets like popcorn buckets are apparently the thing now. I guess people are people just love their popcorn buckets. I mean, I like the popcorn, but it's also you can use them again. Like it's 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 something nice for me where I always like my cup. Like once I go, maybe once a year, I got to get my nice like themed cup, themed bucket so I can have it. I can pull it out and then I use it at home for maybe not popcorn and probably everything else. <laughs> so there is <laughs> actually a Super Nintendo World store at Universal City Walk Hollywood that sells those. Uh, they have like a Super Mushroom Sipper, which are the like one up <gasps> mushrooms from Mario. Nice. Uh, and they have a uh, like superstar popcorn bucket uh, for Aww. sale. So I imagine those will also transition into the parks once that park opens up. But it's already yeah, yeah. here in the States in Hollywood. Yeah. Oh so, so they open up a Super Nintendo World like market essentially to kind of show off some stuff and get the hype going for uh, for out in Hollywood. So, uh, yeah. So that's absolutely happening right now. So you can check that out before it opens. But again, I think once once the actual the park opens and once the Super Nintendo World area, of the park opens, uh, they've got shops there as well. Of course, there is the one up factory, which is like the big store at the uh, Super Nintendo World. So that's where you can go get all your various Mario stuff and whatnot. And then there's also Mario Motors, which is the exit of the Mario Kart attraction. Okay. Because, you know, you have to exit through a gift shop. So Mario Motors is where you go. And apparently they have like exclusive stuff there that you can only buy at Mario Motors that's Nintendo themed. So uh, we'll absolutely have to check that out when that opens up as well. And of course, you know, like like Ben was saying, uh, there is another right now. There is another shop open at CityWalk, so you don't even have to go into the parks. You can actually just go to CityWalk and check out some of the Super Mario stuff. Um, whether or not that stays open once uh, Super Nintendo World opens, mm. we'll see. Uh, I know they're going to, they're going to want to incentivize people to actually go inside the park to do this stuff. So I wouldn't be shocked if uh, if it closes down to get people inside the park. But we'll see that we'll find out in a couple months. And then uh, so but one of the biggest things that I'm very, very excited for, and I think this to me is the modern version of theme parks that I'm I'm pumped for. And we're seeing it more and more now lately is the uh, we're I'm talking about the power up bands is what we're going to be talking about now. So these are additional things similar to uh, magic bands out in, uh, you know, more like magic band plus out in, out in uh, Disney World, where these are bracelets that you put on that have a little like icon on them. Uh, there are six. There are six power up bands. There's a Mario one, Luigi, uh, Princess Peach, a Toad uh, one, Yoshi egg and a Fire Flower one. And so you wear these on your wrist and they tie to an app on your phone, a Universal Studios app on your phone. And then throughout the, the whole Super Nintendo world, there is stuff you can do that ties to that power up band. So there are blocks that you can actually hit, like you can punch, like you would normally punch to collect coins throughout Super Nintendo World. When you play the Super, the, when you play the Mario Kart, or when you ride the Mario Kart attraction, you can tap your band and it'll keep track of your score. You can get achievements on a theme park attraction, BK. 
That is so awesome. I I, I know I, I I've been wanting to do it. I know they've been they've been toying with it a little bit, but you can actually tie this thing to your your character. You can build up stuff. You can earn points, and not only that. This is what's cool. So throughout the, all of Super Nintendo World, there's interactable, there's interactive stuff that if you have one of the power-up bands, you can actually interact with it. So there's like shells that are moving around, and if you like hit, like if you hit a certain area, the shell will get knocked down, or a piranha plant will pop up. All kinds of stuff happens, and you unlock keys. If you do like certain things, you unlock keys in the park. And I think there's like five different areas you can get keys. And if you get three of the keys, you can then go to a special area where you fight uh, uh, Bowser Jr. So which which is wild. So, uh, yeah, you can you can. So you get coins you collect from coin blocks and mini games. There are stamps, which are achievements uh, from completing various tasks and events and your your rankings and the online leaderboards for Mario Kart, Bowser Jr., team ranking and daily ranking. So there's like actually a leaderboard that you can join as you do this, like as you go throughout the park and do that. Not only that, the one cool thing, those super those little bands, they act as amiibos for Switch. So I if was going to ask. Yeah, like, is so there you can anything actually... for like like Nintendo or like Mario Kart that I can get from coming in the parks? Because like that's what I'm looking for. Yeah, so you can actually like they they become amiibos. So like they're they're usable outside of the park as well, which is really really cool. Wow. I'll be honest, I was looking last night to see if I could buy some for us, and uh, they're about sixty dollars with thirty dollars shipping from Japan right now. <laughs> so, oh my gosh. So uh, yeah, so maybe once Hollywood opens up, we'll grab a few of them. But uh, uh, so of the six, so you've got Mario, Luigi, Peach, Toad, Yoshi, and the Fire Flower. Which, which one would you grab? What would be your 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 band of choice? Well, I'm sad. You keep calling it Fire Flower. Does everyone just forget about Daisy? She's orange and has a Daisy on it. Is it not the Daisy band? I, I don't, is it, Ben Ben's looking through them right now. Okay, is that is that Daisy? Because there there is very clearly a Princess Peach one that has Princess Peach's like crown. The crown, on it. yeah. I assumed it was the Fire Flower. Or maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it is. There you go. So like, like I'm that's looking. That's gotta at, be Daisy. Come I'm on. like 99% you know certain that's Daisy. Yeah. See? Okay. I'm, I'm looking. <laughs> I'm looking at it now, and I see on the actual band itself, it does kind of have like that dress sort of like. You're right. Fold to it. So yeah, that that's Daisy. Okay, that's my bad. Daisy, I I'm sorry. <laughs> You Everyone. heard all the Daisy stands listening right now. Me, that's the band I would get. Okay. Jack's gonna okay, have so a bunch of Daisy mains from Super Smash Brothers coming down on him. Pissed. <laughs> all right, so you're Daisy. I 100. percent I'm going Luigi. I love Luigi. Yes. I've always loved Luigi. Uh, so uh, producer Ben, who who would you go for out of those six? Oh, uh, I feel like it's very producer for me to be either Yoshi or Toad. I, 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 I don't, don't know about. I just feel like somehow Toad is probably like the producer of the Super Mario Brothers world. I'll go with Toad. Okay, Toad, that's a good one. I, I appreciate that. So we'll we'll have to figure out how to get a hold of those maybe before we go out to Hollywood. So I'm I wonder if the ones you buy in Japan actually work in Hollywood, like if they're cross compatible. They because mm -hmm. like I think like the Magic Bands you buy in Florida at Disney at Disney World, I don't know if they work in, in Disneyland in California. So I wonder if there's going to be that sort of crosstalk between them. Maybe because like the Amiibo stuff, maybe it'll be a little bit easier to make that work, but I'm not 100% positive on that. Uh, let's see here. So several interactive mini attractions where guests can interact with a Koopa Troopa, Piranha Plant, Goomba, Thwomp, and Babam. Winning at least three of these gives entry to a room where guests battle Bowser Jr. by jumping and ducking in front of a motion tracking video wall. These require separately sold power bands and the official Universal Studios Japan app. So you actually have to do challenges in order to unlock an area inside of the park. So you can't just wander in there. You actually have to show that you've completed the challenges to get in this separate area, which is such a cool idea. I love that so much. I mean... You could argue that it is paid DLC <laughs> within a theme park, sure. which I, I get, but also because it, it's, it's only, essentially it's a separate ticket to get into another attraction, you know? And yeah. so I, I, I think that's really, really cool. I don't know if that is coming to Hollywood or not. Um, I imagine it is in some form or fashion. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's so cool. Such such a really really cool idea. Yeah, I and love yeah. it so much, especially since like Mario is a video game first and foremost. So to be able to like incorporate a gaming element in your park experience that isn't just a ride or merely an attraction, but like this kind of quest combination, search and explore. I think that's so cool. 
Yeah, I, I, I just posted a photo over on our Discord channel there. If you want to take a look at it, just I, I have this big wide photo. So uh, I, I posted a photo that we're going to hopefully get up on YouTube.com slash annual pass. It's an overview of the whole Super Nintendo World area from Japan right before it opened. And it looks I mean, it looks like a video game. It looks almost like a cartoon. It is such a beautiful beautiful attraction like a, a beautiful world and the theming and the colors they just pop so well and that is one thing i am i'm am concerned about because the colors are so sharp and so and so bright will that stand the time like will that will, is, is that something they uh. have to repaint all the time or is it something where you know they've got i don't know but i mean like that that's the thing it's gonna fade over time magic and paint maybe <laughs> I, I don't know May, maybe something like that but the whole area looks absolutely incredible and it's going to be opening up in in Hollywood in less than 2 months. So, we got to get out there and and check it out cuz I want to go so bad, Jack. I, I want to go so bad. We've got some friends. I we got some friends. Maybe we can make it happen. It is very curious that nowhere on the trailer for the announcement uh for Super Nintendo World or on their website it shows anything about the Bowser Jr stuff. Uh, okay. it's so as far as I can tell, it's completely missing. It, it's mostly just detailing the Mario Kart Bowser's Challenge, which is the Mario Kart ride, the power up bands and interactivity, uh, dining and shopping and everything else we've talked about so far. But there's nothing here on the Bowser Jr. like unlockable area. But they have that on the Japanese website as something that they advertise. Okay. I was so, curious, maybe they wanted to keep it a secret because like there are some of those secrets that we found out when we were at Universal Studios Orlando, especially with the Wizarding World, is that there are certain areas and things they like to keep more interactive with uh, the cast members being able to take them there. So maybe it's something if they have it, they might not want to advertise it. May maybe. I mean, I don't know. Like. I mean, because obviously people are going to show up to this thing. So right. it's like, I mean, you can literally say like, hey, we're opening up a Super Nintendo World area of Universal Hollywood. People are going to show up. You don't need to do a lot of marketing for that. <laughs> so I, I don't know if you want to give away all of the secrets of it. That's but what I'm also, saying. Like, like, again, with the, the just, oh, come, on, come on now. <laughs> again, sorry, my cat is deciding like, hey, you're working from home today. Uh with the amount of size they have, I just don't know if they can pull it off. That, that's the thing. It's mm. like, so it actually is the whole land is multiple levels. So it's like there is like an upper level and a lower level to actually add in more space. Uh, at least the one in Japan. Well, again, Hollywood could be a little bit different. We'll, we'll see what it's going to look like. Uh, but yeah, we'll see. I, I, I am I am curious about the Bowser Jr. stuff. I don't know how much room it takes up. Um so if it is something where it is contained to kind of a smaller area, maybe that maybe they'll sneak it in somehow. We'll we'll, we'll see exactly what's going to go on. I but, wonder, uh, and this is pure speculation, but I wonder if like Bowser Jr. is more popular in Japan. And so maybe yeah. there's something where like it's skinned as Bowser Jr. in Japan, but they're working on something different but similar as like a new like bad an adaptation guy. Here? Exactly. Yeah. That'll probably yeah. land better with, uh, you know, American audiences. I mean, they might even wait till after the movie comes out. There could be additional characters we don't know, especially on the Bowser side with him being a main focus that they could bring out that might do really well there, especially being a new character. I feel like it's just a missed opportunity if they don't do that never like that next level. Like that's what yeah. makes I think these bands different and better, in my opinion, than whatever Disney's got going on on their wrists. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, to be fair, honestly, the, it is also something they could expand. You know, it, it right. is something where, like, if people are losing their mind for it, they'd be like, okay, let's build an area, like a separate area, like maybe knock down something outside of the Super Nintendo world and expand into it. And that's where we'll add the Bowser Jr. area. Like, there, there is a lot of, of room for improvement, you know, but... That being said, the the version that's going to be coming to Epic Universe is going to be the largest version of Super Nintendo World, and I am thrilled <laughs> by all of the stuff that's going to be going on there now. Uh, Bio Reconstruct over on Twitter has been posting photos of like he he does flyovers of the parks and stuff, and he he posts photos about once every week of the construction of Epic Universe, and you can see like Bowser's castle like slowly going up, and it's just it's been so fun to watch it being built, and it. It feels like oh, uh, it feels like it's so much closer than it actually is. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I mean, we're we're two years out now from Epic Universe opening, and uh, and yeah, it's gonna be excruciating because we're gonna hit a point 
where like the physical park is pretty much built, but it's gonna be all the internals, all the additional like right. like support stuff with it. Like we're gonna be looking at like an almost finished park for almost a year where it's like, it's done, it's done. It's like, no, it's not, no, it's, it's not. not. It's like, empty. <laughs> yeah, it's like from the outside, sure, but the, the amount of logistics that are gonna go into it, like th that's the, the wild thing for me is like, think about opening up a brand new park. Think about how many new employees you're gonna have to get in, new, new crew members you're gonna have to get in to train for new attractions, new, new, you know, like workflows, new, I mean, like everyone, new custodial, new managers, like there's so, it's gonna, it's like suddenly dropping like, oh, now we need, you know, 10,000 new employees to open up a brand new park. That's wild to me. The, the, the logistics behind that is absolutely incredible. And so, um, yeah. No, I well, love that. I think also yeah. like being able to bring jobs to Florida is pretty dope. Like that's yeah. pretty much a retirement state, if I'm being honest. <laughs> um, so for me, I get excited when theme parks open down there because there's not much going for that state. Uh, but it does yeah. offer a lot of jobs for young people. I mean, if I were young and in Florida, I'm going to want to be on that line to wor <laughs> just work there, let alone visit. So that's got to be such a fun experience. And the atmosphere has got to be totally different than I think a lot of like other parks already have like you're gonna go in there and it's not gonna feel like anything else like with the vibe and the pictures we've been looking at I mean literally the textures of the paint feel like they are from the video game yeah yeah it's <laughs> it's it, it's it's gonna be incredible and I cannot wait for it to open I actually get to experience it myself so our friends at Universal, hey guys, just Hello? you know, we, we've been out to you sent us out to Florida a couple times. And we love you, we, we love you very much. If, if you want to send an annual pass out to, to Hollywood, let us know. Maybe we can visit our friends at Funhouse while we're out there, maybe, maybe do like a whole big thing. Yeah, yo, BK's first uh Hollywood trip. I would, oh my please, gosh, I've never done anything on that coast involving theme parks ever. Oh my god, oh, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna text my our contact out there today and see, see what we can make happen. He's, he's been talking about sending us out to Hollywood for a while, so maybe now they've announced some dates we can make, we can start locking in something. So keep, keep your mid February open, BK, because yes, we, we might be making it out to California. So. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Well, that that's pretty much going to do it at our, our brief look, our upcoming tease of Super Nintendo World for Universal Hollywood and also Epic Universe. Like I, I am looking forward to it. I mean, this is it's it is like a dream for me. It's it's video games and theme parks mixing together. How awesome is that? How awesome Dude, is that? It's the world's best thing ever. Like it was like we're the target audience. Like they yeah. made this for us. <laughs> yeah. They're like, hey, they're like, we're gonna do this specifically for you. And I, I appreciate that very much. <laughs> so uh now this is the point of the, the episode where I ask you a question. You the, you amazing pass holders, I'm gonna ask you a question. So we have Super Nintendo World which is mostly Mario themed. We have Donkey Kong Country, the Donkey Kong minecart experience coming. What other Nintendo attractions would you want built? Would you want like a Super Metroid thing? Obviously, like Pokemon, like there, there's so many different things we could do. Like what would be your dream Nintendo attraction to open up? Like BK, do you have any ideas of what sort of dream attraction you would want? <laughs> it's the weirdest thing ever. Can I, can oh, I get no. a Bayonetta world, please? <laughs> Bayonetta world that would be that would be interesting like character I don't know if she could she walk around the park I don't like, think so I don't think that's PG-14 that Jack. might Let be one not. of those like after hours Halloween Horror Night type events BK oh man listen if they want to transform all the Nintendo world into Bayonetta for Halloween Horror Night, sign me up speaking of Halloween Horror Nights I wonder if Nintendo is going to allow them to incorporate <gasps> Halloween Horror Night stuff with Luigi's Super Mansion? Nintendo world I mean, you could do Luigi's Mansion. Like, that could be really cool. Even as Bowser takes over. Where right, you have, Bowser like, the, take over. Like, like the, the Bones guys walking around. Like, Dry yes. Bones. Like, dry Bones, all... booze all over the place. Oh, like, man. AR boo. Oh, my gosh. I well, think we're that, onto something, Jack. I mean, that is one cool thing. So, about the, the Super, the Mario Kart attraction, um, because it is AR based, they and it's mostly projections, a lot of projections in there, as opposed to physical props. They can change the attraction. They can actually add like different versions of it. So they could do spooky version. They could do holiday version. They could do a bunch of different things if they want to. I don't know if they have done that stuff yet, but it's it's made to be able to be manipulated like that. So we might see stuff like that. And, you know, like with Harry Potter World, especially out or the Wizarding World stuff out in Florida specifically, um, they are very much like they don't touch that stuff with Halloween Horror Nights. The one in Hollywood, they did have uh, 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 not, uh, what is it? The Death Eaters, I believe. Death Eaters, yeah. There were Death Eaters inside the park, which they added new for Halloween Horror Nights out in Hollywood. Uh, but that does kind of only the only stuff they sort of touched on when they're out there. So I don't know if they're not going to do that there or what. But I mean, God, the idea of having Halloween Horror Nights and including Super Mario stuff like that is pretty cool. But anyway, we'll figure out if that's going to happen later this year. So but let us know 
in the comments over at roosterteeth.com. What would be your Super Nintendo World attraction? What would you do? I would love to see some sort of Super Metroid roller coaster. I think that would be awesome. Totally. Like, like, like the idea of like going, like, like spinning into the ball and everything and moving around, like fighting like, you know, Mother Brain. Like that would be, that'd be pretty cool, I think. So if that, if that is something they could pull off. But let us know over at roosterteeth.com in the comments on this episode. And then when we do a live stream, which hopefully we're doing one in January, our December one got a little messy. Sorry, we, we had, I had some, I had a scheduling issue where I wasn't able to make it. So we had to, we had to push that one. But uh, if we're going to be doing one at some point in January, and uh, we'll be answering a bunch of questions over the various episodes. And uh, if we pick your, your answer, to talk about during the episode, we'll send you an autograph theme park map signed by me and BK and probably producer Ben too, just because I'm gonna, I'm gonna make him sign a whole bunch of stuff. So <laughs> that should be good. So check that out. But uh, but yeah, that's pretty much gonna do it today. Uh, thank you everyone for listening. Make sure to follow us over on annual underscore pass on Twitter and Instagram, and we are annual pass pod on TikTok, and also go to youtubecom slash annual pass if you want to see the live version of this podcast and you can see our our pretty faces. My cat Cooper has been walking around my desk this whole time. You can see him wandering around, and also we'll include some of the uh, photos and whatnot. Also, a special shout out to Chris TDR Explorer. Go check out all of his stuff. He's done tons and tons of amazing content on uh, Universal Japan, but uh, like specifically Super Nintendo World out there. And a uh, super super nice guy. Very very cool. We, we talked with him uh, a few months ago, so go check out our interview with him. And uh, and yeah, go watch his, his content because it's really really great. Also and, want to uh, shout that, out uh, really quickly just Orlando Park Stop as well. Uh, a lot oh, yeah, of the yeah. background images I've been showing and everything have come from them. Uh, they've done a massive deep dive into like how the the park is built, what it's going to look like, things like that. Just wanted to shout them out too. Yeah, Alicia over at Theme Park Stop. She's been on top of it. Also, follow Bio Reconstruct on Twitter if you aren't already. Like that, the amount of photos that dude posts is, is just absolutely incredible. So, uh, check out all this stuff. There's su such a cool community. I, I love the theme park world. It's so, so awesome. So, that'll do it for me today. BK, you feel like you learned anything today? Yes, I've learned tons of things. I didn't know how <laughs> parks were constructed, and this started in 2015. I had no idea it's been going on for this long. Yeah, well, the announcement and then like three years of building, it's it's wild. It's wild, but it's, it's so cool to see it actually happening. And uh, I, I will say one thing is, is kind of kind of surprising. So uh, uh, <laughs> out at Magic Kingdom in Orlando, uh, they started working on Tron before they broke ground on Super Nintendo World in Hollywood. And Super Nintendo World, the entire land is opening before Tron opens in, in Magic Kingdom. Don't know what that says about... <laughs> The, I guess I guess uh, you know uh, Magic Kingdom's copy paste is not as good as Universal's copy paste, I suppose. <laughs> but anyway, that's that's a whole other can of worms. But that'll do it for us today. Thank you so much, everyone, for for listening and watching. Don't forget, check out store.roosterteeth.com. Go pick up some annual pass merchandise. We have amazing stuff. We've got we've got our our fanny packs. We've got our shirts. BK's rocking the 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 brand new purple. This is my theme park shirt. I've got the classic ringer on. Lots of neat stuff. We have a rope drop running club running shirt as well. Speaking of which, check out my uh, my personal Twitter is Jack underscore P. I'm going to be posting this week from the marathon weekend because I'm going to be out there running my my half and full marathons and 5Ks and 10Ks. We have a lot of people. The uh, the Rope Drop Running Club, we're all meeting up on Sunday after the marathon and taking Aww. photos with our medals. So uh, so that's going to be really, really cool. So I'm, I'm excited for that. There's a whole bunch of us going out for it. And I, I, that's like that's my, my favorite sort of like sort of ancillary thing that's happened with Annual Pass. It's been so cool. So anyway, much love to everyone out there. Thank you so much for watching and listening. We appreciate you and we'll see you next time. Bye, everyone. See ya. See ya.